A standstill in the Foini Amorite War was occurring, where both sides failed in their offensives, while on the north, a different war was occurring between the Arameans and the Titans. But through a set of events, these conflicts would begin to merge into a larger conflict by the arrival of a familiar face in Canaan. Upon returning to their own kingdoms, the Hoenitian kings began to replenish their forces for another campaign season. The Amorites, under the command of Hazilu, had mastered a big army to siege Sidon. Bahal, the son of Amivilku, was given the overall command of Tyre's armies. And along with them went Amurapi, the younger son of Amitamr, the diseased king of Arwad. They marched an attack, the sieging army at Sidon, making Aziru forced to find shelter in the mountains. Baal set down his army, starving his opponent out instead of a rushed assault. A few days later, Zimreda and his sons joined the battle with their many war chariots. Aziru, seeing that he was overwhelmed, decided to sound a retreat. His march back to Amorite lands was well mannered, only receiving light casualties. By this time, a noble arrived from the land of the Edites to receive the end of Iram's daughter, Arisha, in marriage. He was none other than the heir of the king of Ugarit. Nikmepa, that received exile from the Etites, that now sent him to Canaan in order to strengthen the Phoenician reserve against the Amorites. Being of the same authority as his father, he was able to convince Tyrant's prince Bahar to hate him in making war in the north. And so, he marched to Samurai, where it's king, Shamus Kamua, the son of Dupi Teshu, sent his general, Kian, to give battle to the approaching Foenishong army. Bahal and Amurapi, commanding the wings of the army, went forward to arrest the Amorite forces before the main clash. For a small detachment from Samura was coming to aid them. Kian sent his chariots to charge forward Amurapi's forces, making him fall back from his charge. Harhaba saw this as the time to send the infantry forward that was now reinforced by the same force of Shardana mercenaries that was once on Aziru's army that defected from the Amorites due to not receiving adequate pay. 
seeing that he was on a better position, Amurapi attacked Kiana on a chariot duel. But he was no warrior, so he quickly lost and fled the battle. Arhalba, seeing this, charged forward in order to save Amurapi, where he pursued Kian, that was killed by arrow fire from Arhalba's men. Without the commander, the Samurian army quickly began their retreat towards the city, where they would pick it off by the Shardana mercenaries that captured many hundreds. With the main army of Samura defeated, Shamush Kamua dared to sally no more, holding to his fortifications while the Phoenicians sieged it. At the south, a new front had been opened when Azir once again attacked, this time upon the Israelite city of Azor in the Sea of Galilee. The Phoenicians, being allies of the southern tribes, sent reinforcements at the command of Iram of Kebal, Simreda of Sidon, and Hibirano, the heir of Amitamr. The Phoenician force was mainly made of chariots, so they only served a skirmishing role on the battle. And although giving considered casualties on Azirus' armies, they were pushed back, leaving the battle in defeat. This left Aziru able to finish the Israelites in Azor and take the city for his own. In the north, Shamush Kamua requests for reinforcements to the other Amorite kings at Fallon or deaf ears. They had lost the will to continue the war, for they saw that the Arameans were using them as midshipmen, while they preoccupied themselves with the Hittites. So they led the Amorite kingdom of Samura to its fate, for it was it that orchestrated the alliance with the people of Aram. After some months of siege, Arhalva began the main assault of Samura on autumn of 1271 BC. With the Shardana mercenaries leading the charge, the weak defenses of the city tried desperately to defend their homes with the tenacity of lions, but to no avail. In a matter of a few hours, the defenders of the walls would be beaten back to the main square of the city, where they captured their own king and after him in surrender to Harhalba and Pahal. Shamush Kamua would die a few years later in prison, while Samura returned to Phoenician influence, with Amurapi as its king. Then, by the end of 1270 BC, the Treaty of Aka would be signed, with Malak Hili representing the Amorite Confederation's commitment to a ceasefire. Although peace was brought, more conflict 
will surely come in the future. For the people of Aram still claim the northern Phoenician kingdoms as their own. See the next chapter of this story to watch the upcoming war for Arwad and Ugarit unfold in this other realm.